Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about rational functions. Now rational functions are a little different than the other functions that we've done, mainly because they function very heavily on asymptotes. Now if you don't feel very comfortable with your knowledge on asymptotes, you may want to pause this video and go check out the extra video, just focus on asymptotes, and then we'll carry on with this lesson. But if not, let's move on. So when we talk about rational functions, we always, I always like to give you guys a parent function to refer to, right? So in this case, the parent function that we're going to refer to is 1 over x y equal to 1 over x is going to be our just our traditional rational function right so um let's kind of draw give you guys a little sketch of that so you guys know what that looks like so like i said rational functions are very heavily on focused on asymptotes so i'm going to start out by first drawing out the function and then i'm going to talk about how this asymptotes affect its shape so i'm going to draw a function here in blue so i'm going to start off by bordering bordering the y-axis coming down here in the first quadrant and then bordering the x-axis right here staying within the x quadrant alright now I'm gonna just give you guys a quick reminder on quadrants if you guys have forgotten your quadrants here is quadrant 1 quadrant 2 quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 now let's go back to drawing the rest of the graph which falls in quadrant 3 it's going to start by bordering the x-axis, and then we're going to border the y-axis. All right. But now, why does this look like this? Why? Why does it just have to border the x-axis? Why does it have to border the y-axis? Right. So the idea here is that we're going to have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote right here, x equal to zero. That is pretty much going to be the y-axis which is the reason why the graph has to border the y-axis on the bottom right here in the top because it just can't touch it. When it borders it just kinda like slides very 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 close to it it doesn't actually touch it. So now we're gonna have another asymptote here which is gonna be our horizontal asymptote y equal to zero which is actually our x-axis. So we border the x-axis and we border the y-axis here in the third quadrant but then we also have the in the first quadrant when we border the y-axis and then we border the x-axis. So that's pretty much it for the, how the rational function looks like, right? But there's a little technical things here and there about rational functions. So a rational function is actually the ratio of two blank. So when we deal for rational functions, you may not notice that one over x is the ratio between two different things, but it's actually is the ratio between two polynomials. So here we're going to put polynomials. Right? And it can be expressed as, with some, like, you know, some actual notation. Let's say the function we're going to call it f of x. The ratio is going to be between, let's say, p of x and q of x. I'm going to use p and q because they follow each other, p, q. So, and now what we have to do is, given that blank and blank are polynomials. So we just said that the ratio, that, that, a, poly, that a, a rational function is a ratio between two polynomials, right? So, P and Q need to be polynomials. So given that, P and Q are polynomials. But now there's a restriction on one of these, right? So the restriction here in this rational function is going to be that the bottom, the bottom of the fraction cannot be equal to zero. So the bottom polynomial, which is QX, QX, right? It cannot be equal to zero. All right? So what happens? What happens if what happens if q of x is equal to 0, right? So if q of x cannot equal to 0, because if not, the fraction is undefined. All right? So whenever the bottom of the fraction is at 0, it's undefined. So we don't want it to have an irrational function. So we try to make sure the q of x that we have is not a 0. All right? So the next thing that we got to look at is rational functions, other than vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes, which you have seen here in the little sketch that I drew out for you guys, you also need to look out for another type of asymptote. And it is not a new different type of asymptote, it is an oblique asymptote, which an oblique asymptote. Some people may actually even call it a slant asymptote. So depending on what the mood is of the day, you may call it a different thing. But an oblique asymptote isn't a new asymptote. An oblique asymptote is actually a type of horizontal asymptote. 
So the idea is that you're going to have whether horizontal and a vertical, or you're going to have a vertical and an oblique. You can't have both, right? So you either have a horizontal or you have an, you have an oblique. It's the same thing, it's just different types. Different types. So now let's look at an example of how this stuff can be applied. So now that you guys are confident on asymptotes, right? We're going to start off with an easier asymptote, which in this case is going to be our vertical asymptote, right? So when you guys compute asymptotes, it just gives you like an equation of a line. Now I'm going to actually show you the meaning of what these asymptotes do for your graph, right? So the vertical asymptote in this case, what we do is we set the bottom equal to zero. So x minus one equal to zero, and then we just solve for x. So x is equal to one. So my asymptote in this case is going to be x equal to one. So I'm going to go to where I think x equal to one is. I'm just going to, it's going to be there. I'm going to draw a vertical line. The graph can never touch. Asymptotes can never be crossed. So now horizontal asymptote. What I need to do, if you guys remember, I need to compare where is what wh um, where the exponents are bigger, right? So I need to look out at exponents. Look at exponents. And in this case, where is it bigger? It's bigger on the Oh, wait, it's not bigger anywhere. It's bigger. It's the same exponent at the top and the same exponent at the bottom, right? Because it's 2 to the 2 to the 1 and next to the 1. So when the exponents are the same, in this case the exponents are the same, right? What this turns into is we look at the coefficients. So, we have the same exponents, we just look at the coefficients. The coefficients at the top here is 2. The coefficient at the bottom here is 1, right? And like I always said, asymptotes are always equations. So it's not just 2, it is y equal to 2 because it's a horizontal line. It's a horizontal asymptote, it's y equal to 2. 2 over 1, which is just equal to 2. So now we're going to draw this asymptote. We're going to draw this asymptote probably in, still draw it in blue. So if we go to 2, Right? So now we have a rational function there, which we're going to equal to 2. And now, it's always a good tip that whenever you have a rational function and you're trying to graph it, right, and you're trying to like make it nice and, and pretty, what you need to do is you need to find your vertical asymptote, you need to find your horizontal asymptote. And then you might as well want to find like the x or the y intercept, right? So in this case, I'm going to find the x and the y intercept as well. So the x-intercept, if you guys haven't forgotten, for the x-intercept, we make the y equal to 0. So in this case, I'm going to have 0 equal to 2x over x minus 1. Right? So how do I solve this? I need to solve for x, right? So I'm going to get rid of the x minus 1, which is on the denominator. I'm going to multiply it by both sides. You guys see that? It's going to cancel here. 0 times anything over here is just going to be 0. And then I get 2x. So when I solve for for x, I'm just going to divide both sides by 2. So x is going to be equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, and I was told that the y is 0, these, these are the coordinate of 0, 0, which I'm going to draw right here. 0, 0. Right? So let's say I want to find the y-intercept. I need to make the x equal to 0. So this is usually a little easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have y equal to 0 on the top over 0 minus 1. So now we have 0 over negative 1. So now we remember we have 0 over a number. When we have 0 over a number that tells us on, so if we're on, we're good, it is 0. If we were to have a number over 0, it would be no, so it would be undefined. All right. So now we have that y is equal to 0. So now these are the coordinate of, since we said that the x was 0 already, and we get 0 for y, it's going to be 0, 0. So the x-intercept and the y-intercept in this case are the same. They're both 0, 0. So let's draw our function, right? So our function needs to go through this point, right? It needs to go through, it needs to go through 0, 0. And then it needs to border our asymptotes, right? So if I need to border this asymptote, I'm actually just going to go through here and get so close to it, but barely, but not touch it. I'm going to get really, really close to it, but not touch it. 
and then I'm going to go all the way down here. I'm going to get closer, really, really, really closer, and not touch it. So that's that's the first part. That's like the third quadrant part that we did before. And now we need to do the first quadrant part, which is over here. And we're going to get so close right here, but we're not going to touch it. And then we're going to get so close with the horizontal asymptote, but we're not going to touch it. So that's how we successfully draw a rational function. We go over the vertical asymptote, which is easier. Then we go over the horizontal asymptote by looking at the coefficients. Then we look for the x-intercept. Then we look for the y-intercept. And then we're done. We kind of just put it together. We make sure that it makes sense. It goes to a point, and it's a border that the asymptotes, and we're done. So now let's look at example two, which is going to be our last example of the sheet. But let's make sure we understand it. So in this case, we're going to do the same procedure. Right? We're going to start off with we're going to start off with vertical asymptotes. By vertical asymptotes, I just do the bottom equal to zero. So I have x minus three equal to zero, right? So then I solve for x. X is equal to three. So I'm going to draw an asymptote real quick. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I have a vertical asymptote here at, neg at, at positive three. So I'm done. I already found my vertical asymptote, and now I'm ready to move on to my horizontal asymptote. All right. So now I'm going to look at the exponents, right? That's what was a procedure. So for horizontal asymptote, we look at exponents. Okay. So now in this case, the top is bigger, right? We look at the exponents and we have x squared over one, right? So circle that x squared and one here, right? So the top exponent is bigger than the bottom. But whenever the top exponent is bigger than the bottom, we have to look out for oblique asymptotes, right? Because only when there's exactly greater than one, we have an oblique. And that is the case here. So the top is bigger. So we actually have an oblique. And when we have an oblique, how do we find obliques? We do long division. If this by any chance was not understood very easily, you need to go back to my extra video on asymptotes where I go through how to find vertical asymptotes, how to find horizontal asymptotes, and how to find oblique asymptotes. So I go way more into detail there. So when I go explain the rational functions, I can just go straight through the rational functions part and I'll fall behind on the asymptote part. And there's lots of practice at the end of that, that lecture that you guys can cover and get very comfortable with the different types of asymptotes. These will follow you later on, especially when we hit limits. So which is our next section after is. So and now we're going to just compute the, the, the oblique asymptote or the slant asymptote, however you want to call it, by doing some long division. So I'm going to put the top here. Give myself a little space. The top here is going to be x squared, and the bottom here is going to be x minus 3. So then I ask myself, right, what am I going to multiply to x to get x squared? Hmm x times what gives me x squared? You're right. It's x times x. So then I'm going to distribute now the x, and then x times x is x squared, and then x times 3 is minus 3x. Then I'm going to follow my division process, which I need to distribute a negative, because I need to subtract this. I'm going to distribute this negative in here, distribute this negative in here. So it's going to be a minus, because positive and negative is a minus. And then this negative times this negative that we have here is going to turn into a positive. So now that I have distributed my negative, I'm going to erase it. And I'm going to just get rid of that negative. This is a positive, so I forget. All right. So it is no, it is no uh, coincidence that when we're going to add the top and the bottom, the positive x squared and the minus x squared are going to cancel. And then now all we're left with is positive. 3x. So now, we ask ourselves, can we multiply x by anything to get 3x? Right? If the answer is no, then we're done. But in this case, the answer is yes, and we can multiply 3x by, I mean, we can multiply x. So once again, we're looking over here at 3x and x, so we're comparing these two, and we ourselves, what can we multiply to x to get 3x? And that's going to be positive 3, because we're trying to get positive 3x. We had a negative 3x, we'll cover negative 3. So in this case, we put a positive 3a, positive 3, and then we distribute it again. So instead of distributing now from the x, we're going to distribute from the 
3. So we're going to have here 3x minus 9, because 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And we're getting a little bit out of space there. So we're going to distribute the negative how we did earlier. So if I distribute that negative, negative times the negative 3 here, so I'm making myself a little space, it's going to be negative. And then this negative here times this negative here is going to give me a positive. So now that I've distributed my negative, I can combine the top and the bottom. So I have a positive 3x on the top and a negative 3x on the bottom. It's going to cancel. I'm going to have no nothing left. And then I'm just going to have a positive 9 left. That's going to be my remainder. My remainder is going to be a positive 9. Now, can I, multiply can, I can I multiply x by anything to get 9? And the answer is no. Right? If I multiply x by the smallest thing, which would be a number, it would just give me a number times x, which is already bigger than 9. So we're done. We're done with our long division. It was very long, I know, hence the name. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write out the asymptote by making an equation. Since this is a horizontal asymptote, we're going to say that the answer to this is y equal to, and all we care about, we don't care about the remainder. This thing, this 9 here, has no meaning to us. All we care about is the top right here, our answer of the long division, which is x plus 3. Right? So, now that you have the, the, the horizontal asymptote, or in this case, the oblique, which is, a type, which is a type of horizontal asymptote, we can move on to the last two things before we graph it, which is the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Before we do that, let's graph our oblique asymptote. So, this right here is a linear function, if you guys recall. It's a line with a, a y-intercept of, of 3. So, we're going to go to 3, 1, 2, 3. And a, a slope of a slope of one, right? So we're going to rise one, and we're going to run one, right? So we're going to go up one. We're going to go right one. So now we draw a line, a dashed line, through this. Do my best, right? So now we have a. So now we have a slant asymptote. You see how this asymptote is supposed to be horizontal, but it's not. It's going to be a slant asymptote. It's going to be an oblique asymptote. So now that we have both our asymptotes put together, now let's move on to the, sec the last two parts where we compute the x-intercept and the y-intercept. OK? So now um, what we're going to do is for x-intercept, like we said, we make the y equal to 0. So we're going to do just that here. We're going to have y equal to x squared over x minus 3. And once again, what we do is we multiply both sides by x minus 3. Multiply this up by x minus 3. So 0 times anything is just 0. And then x minus 3 times x minus 3 here, they're going to cross reduce. Because you have just that's why we multiplied both sides by so we can get rid of it. And then we're left with 0 equal to x squared. We can take a square to both sides. So x is equal to plus or minus 0, or just 0. So then our asymptote in this case is going to be 0, 0. So now the, the other one that we need to do is the y-intercept. All right. So for that, we make the x equal to 0. And then we just do the just that. We have 0 squared. And then 0 minus 3. So that's going to be 0 over negative 3. And then once again, we go back to the trick that I always tell you guys. When we have 0 over a number, it tells 0 over a number, which is on, which is good to go. So it's going to give you 0. Because if you had a number over 0, it would be no. So it would be undefined. So then here, our x coordinate is 0. And then we got, we got for our y, we got 0. So we have 0, 0. So we're going to plot that. So I like to always do the asymptotes. Then I'm going to plot my x and y intercept. In this case, they have been the same for both. But it's not always going to be the case. OK? So I'm going to plot my asymptote, right? And then I'm just going to follow my asymptotes, fo follow my borders. So I'm just going to follow my borders here. I'm going to follow this asymptote here, because I have nowhere else to go. I can't go this way, right? Because in that way, I just crash into it. I have like I get like stuck in that room. So here I'm gonna just follow this 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 line right here, this asymptote, 
and then I'm gonna like, start going. I can even, I can go up. This is a sketch. It's going to be very, very exact. I can go up to my asymptote and then just slightly come back down on my own. Whatever point I pick doesn't matter. This is a sketch. You don't have to graph any points. You just have to pick a sketch. So you can actually go up like that, right? Or if you don't feel like that's the right way, you can just go down straight from here, right? You can do whatever you want as in going up, or you can go up like this, or you can go straight down like I did here. Because all you have to do is you have to follow your asymptote, right? All you have to do is just follow your asymptote here, and then you have to follow your asymptote here. So you're bordering both the slant asymptote that we have here, and we have it's border this this vertical asymptote. So now if we have an opening here, we're gonna draw it the one opposite from it, the vertical one to it, right? So if it's here, I'm gonna draw the other one over here. Okay. So I'm just gonna draw it in here, a quick sketch with my opening, right? I worry less about this one because I don't have a point there. I just know that it's going to be, it's going to come in through the vertical asymptote and it's going to go out through the slant asymptote. So there, so we're done. I know our shapes look a little different because we don't have to be a sketch artist here. All we have to do is just cover what we need to do. However, this is like the simpler version of the rational functions and they they can get a little difficult. All right? They could get a little more, way more tricky and then you have to even plug in some points so you can see where your function is going and how it's behaving. So for that, stick around for the practice problems and I'll see you next time.